actually come to the super middleweight um, and again there's a, again there's always been a lot of super middles between middle and uh, light heavy but um, yeah the first one was Murray Sutherland a Scottish guy um, I'm gonna read this from here so you yeah, one of Scottish unsung heroes Murray Sutherland holds the distinction of being the first generally accepted um, champion of the super middle division the weight limit 168 which is about 12 stone um, Sutherland was born in Edinburgh and his family immigrated to Canada Sutherland made his name in the tough in the tough guy free-for-all contests in America I think they're more boxing glove ones uh, free for yeah free for all um, Yes, they were boxing, but tough guy comps, I've seen them before. Um, in the late 1970s, before he became well-respected, a well-respected professional, operating between middleweight and light heavy classes. There had been sporadic attempts to cater for men of this weight, but the category did not become officially recognised until the IBF matched Sutherland with Ernie Singletary. For the vacant title, the new category was clearly needed since the gulf between the middleweight, 160 uh, pounds and 175 pounds light heavyweight division. And that was the biggest in boxing at the time. The WBA followed suit um, in 1987. And the WBC unusually were the slowest off the mark with their championship. Was not contest sealed Sugar Ray Leonard, which this is the what I remember the first time I sort of heard of that was when Ray Leonard topped his did two two weight divisions together to beat Donnie Lalonde to get five weight division titles uh, against Donnie Lalonde in 1988. Since the classes have become one of the busiest most popular and again as I remember Chris Eubanks um, popularizing that against first against Michael Watson um, when he stepped up the middle but again let's go from here so 1987 Murray Sutherland of Scotland wins on points against Ernie Singletary in Atlantic City New Jersey That was for the inaugural title. And then July the 22nd, 1984, Chang, Chang Pal Park from Korea wins the 11th round by KO against Murray Sutherland. And that was in Seoul, uh, Korea. And then January 2nd, 1985, Chang Pal Park beats our, our own Roy Gums. From England by KO in a second round <laughs> that was in Seoul Korea and then June the 30th 1985 Chong Pao Park wins on points over 15 rounds it was still 15 rounds about then over 15 rounds points against Vinny Curto from the US that was in Seoul Korea and in April the 11th 1986, Chong Pao Park wins over 15 rounds again by KO in a 15th round. So KO in him in the last round, this time in Los Angeles in the rematch. And then July the 6th, 1986, Chong Pao Park wins a technical draw against Lindell Holmes in the second round. Again, that happens if you get like um, an un, an accidental uh, foul, you know, happens. But again, don't know what roundage there. Technical draw, I think over a certain amount, it goes to a decision. But again, not enough rounds to create a decision. So that went to a draw. And that was in Chongji, Korea. Chongji, Korea, that was in uh, July 6th. 1986, Chang Pao Park. Oh no, I've already done that. Um, 
here, September the 14th, 1986, Chang Pell Park wins on points over Marvin Mack, over 15 rounds on points in Pusan, Korea. And in January the 25th, 1987, Chang Pell Park wins in the 15th round, stopping him again in the last round. Second time he's done that, but again this time referee stops the fight against Doug Sam from Austria. I realise that's Austria now, not Australia, Austria. And that's in Seoul, Korea. And in May the 3rd, 1987, uh, Chong Pao Park wins and points over 15 rounds against Lindell Holmes in Incheon, Korea. And then... July the 26th, 1987, Chang Pao Park wins in the fourth round. Referee stops the fight against Manuel Oti from Uganda. And that's in Kwangju, uh, Korea. In December 1987, Park relinquishes his IBF title to box for a vacant WBA version. And then we got March the 12th, 1988, Graziano Rotrigani from Germany <coughs> wins in the eighth round. Referee stops the fight against Vince Balware from the US, and that's in Dusseldorf, Germany. That's for the vacant title, <coughs> the IBF title. Then June the 3rd, 1988, Graziano Rotrigani. Wins and points against Nicky Walker from the US over 15 rounds. That was in Berlin, Germany. And in October the 7th, 1988, Graziano Rotigani wins in the 11th round against Chris Reed. The referee stops the fight in the 11th round over Chris Reed from the US. And that was in Berlin, Germany. And then the 27th, 1989, Graziano Rotrigani wins on points against Sugarboy Malinga from South Africa. Over 12 rounds. That was in Berlin, Germany. And in September 1989, Rotrigani relinquishes the title because of weight problems. <coughs> And in January 27th, 1990, Lyndall Holmes wins on points over 12 rounds against Frank Tate from the US Olympic team. And that was in New Orleans. And then you got July the 19th, uh, 1990, Lyndall Holmes wins. Referee stops the fight in the ninth round against Carl. Carl Sullivan from the US in Seattle, Washington. Go down a bit now. So we got December the 16th, 1990, Lyndall Holmes wins on points over 12 rounds. against Sugarboy Malinga in Marino, Italy. Then March the 7th, 1991, Lyndall Holmes wins on points against Anthony Bird from the US. That was in Madrid, Spain. I might have to reload this because the battery's going low. And in May the 18th, 1991, Daryl Van Horn wins the 11th round by KO against Lyndall Holmes in Ver Verbania, Italy. Then August the 17th, 1991, Daryl Van Horn wins by KO in the third round against John Jarvis. Uh, from the US and that was in Irving 
and January the 10th, 1992, Iron Barkley wins in the second round. Referee stops the fight against Daryl Van Horn. That was in New York. And in February 13th, 1993, James Tony comes on the scene, wins by retirement in the ninth round against Iron Barkley in Las Vegas, Nevada. In October the 29th, 1993, James Tony wins on points against the punching postman Tony Thornton over 12 rounds in the US. That was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And in March the 5th, 1994, James Tony wins in the fourth round. Referee stops the fight against Tim Little from the US in Los Angeles. July the 29th, 1994, James Tony wins by KO in the last round against, in the 12th round, against Prince Charles Williams from the US in Las Vegas, Nevada. No, November the 18th, 1994, Roy Jones wins on points over 12 rounds against James Tony. That was in Las Vegas, Nevada. And then March the 18th, 1995, Roy Jones wins in the first round, roughly stops the fight against Anthony Bird in the US in Pensacola, Florida, Roy, Roy's hometown home place, whatever it call it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, June the 24th, 1995, Roy Jones wins in the sixth round against, um, roughly stops the fight in the sixth round against Vinny Pazienza, the Tasmanian devil from the US, Atlantic City, New Jersey, coming back from a broken neck. Um, yeah, he's on his comeback trial. Um, yeah. Yeah, did a few weight divisions coming up at this point. Brilliant. So we got September 30th, 1995. Roy Jones wins in the third round. Referee stops the fight against Tony Thornton, the punching postman in Pensacola, Florida. And then June the 15th, 1996. Roy Jones wins the 11th round by retirement against Eric Lucas from Canada in Jacksonville. Then October the 4th, 1996, Roy Jones wins in the second round against Brian Brannan from the US in Shreveport. March 97, Jones relinquishes the title after being recognised as the WBC light heavyweight champion. So then we start with Charles Brewer. So from here, June 21st, 1998, Charles Brewer Wins in the fifth round against Gary Ballard. Referee stops the fight in the fifth round, Tampa, Florida. December the 2nd, 1997, Charles Brewer wins on points over 12 rounds against Joey DeGrandis from the US in Philadelphia. And in March the 28th, 1998, Charles Brewer beats her own Harold Graham. Tenth round, referee stops the fight in England, Atlantic City, New Jersey. He, he was from England, Sheffield. Um, August the 22nd, 1998, Charles Brewer beats Anthony Bird in the third round. Referee stops the fight. He's from the US, and that was in Leipzig, Germany. October the 24th, 1998, Sven Ocker wins on points against Charles Brewer over 12 rounds in Dusseldorf, Germany. February 27th, 1999, Sven Ocker wins by KO in the third round against Giovanni Nardiello from Italy in Berlin, Germany. May the 8th, 1999, Sven Ocker wins on points over 12 rounds against Gabriel Hernandez in Dusseldorf, Germany. And then September the 4th, 1999, Sven Ocker wins a technical decision, 11th round against Thomas Tate, the US Olympian in Magdeburg, Germany. Lovely. That's the first one.